Um, so I'm Amanda Galligan, and I'm principal network engineer here at Worthy, and I have been thrown headlong into public cloud as a network engineer. So this is a little quick um, montage of my journey with public cloud, Amazon public cloud. I'm going to be specific. It's not like a secret or anything. We're, we're on Amazon these days. So um, just a quick introduction about myself. Um, I'm actually a beer brewer. So um, I'm the person who kind of hunted John down to commission the Inog beers for tonight's talk. Um, so uh, I'm kind of like, he's Obi-Wan Kenobi of the beer. I'm like, whatever, I'm like down on the ground like a slug or something. So I'm, I'm, his, I'm his kind of, uh, you know, child or person in training. So um, yeah, so on to the presentation. So basically, I wanted to kind of give a high, 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 highlight of what devs think the cloud deployment will be like. And this is my kind of um, this is from my experience of working on, on Workday's public cloud. So generally devs think that public cloud is gonna just go like this. You know, like fly away the birdie, it's all good. Yeah. It's like a few, you know, simple, quick, easy, what's the problem? You know. But unfortunately, the sad reality of public cloud is it's more like this. So yeah, we have a lot of people, project managers, in order at the bottom, senior developers, system mins, for our network engineers, don't even get a look in here actually, but we should be there, the architects, everybody fighting on their turf, trying to kind of, you know, push their, their bit and whatnot, and trying to, trying to shoehorn, let's say, legacy enterprise software into public cloud, which is just like the worst way to do things, because, you know, you have to kind of reset your thinking in terms of public cloud and how you deploy applications and workloads. So, I absolutely love this, this quote. So basically, here's a quote from Jeremy Stretch at Packet Life on how clouds are really formed. Yes, it's so true. <laughs> They're formed from the... <laughs> I speak from experience. I actually oh, like this tweet as well. I'm one of the likes there. Many, I've liked it a hundred times if I could have. Um, yeah, this is so true. They are formed from the evaporated tears of thousands of network and sysadmins, the poor sysadmins, and this is the people who build the physical clouds, you know, the Amazons, the Azures, the Googles, and then the people on-premise who have to bring their, their company to the public cloud and bring it in a way that it's both safe, secure, scalable, and as I like to call it, I've coined the phrase cloudy, so that you, you leverage as much of what the public cloud offers, and you try and not you know, fall back on old habits in terms of things you currently might deploy in your data centers. So for me personally, it wasn't easy to get to grips with, I'll be honest. Um, so as the slide here, I'm basically talking, uh, and I, I basically left a team where we'd done scrum stands up, stand ups, and then I was, I couldn't believe I was basically saying, we need to go back to scrums and stand ups and embrace the agile methodologies. So I kind of run away from Agile and just DevOps types principles in general, then I realized that actually is what need, you need that kind of mindset. And it kind of speaks to John's talk that just preceded this one. You need to kind of have a lot of trust. You need to work with a larger group. You've got to work with developers, the environments, people, um, security in particular, um, project managers, product managers, you know, your peers. Um, there's, a, there's a larger group at, at play here, and uh, trust is probably a massive thing in terms of trust and just communication, I guess is probably the key word here. So um, yeah, I basically stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, and they went on and on and on. So then, yeah, security. So it's, it's, it's very public knowledge. I've had a lot of battles in here in terms of trying to enforce security. And at, so when dealing with the developers, I'm trying to impress, I'm trying to get them to understand you can't just do crazy things. I also have a battle on the other side with the security teams here in Workday uh, who kind of want to, let's say, they, 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 they want to apply so much security perhaps that it might stifle the, 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 the DevOps aspect of the project. So you're kind of in the middle of those groups and you're trying to fight those, both those battles. So in terms of dev security though, this is a chat I was having with someone, so the other person I blocked out of this conversation, but. Basically, yeah, this is a security group rule where they allow SSH 0000 int from the internet. And I was like, no, you can't.
can't do that. That's bad. So I had to go, I had to basically go around and go try and correct, you know, talk to people and say, you, you cannot do this. It's not a good practice. Generally, if it all else, just lock it down to work day IP space or, you know, the corporate IP space, just lock it down. Please do not allow the internet into our EC2 instances. That's just bad. We're just asking for trouble there. Um, so in terms of actually then the cloud technologies themselves, I kind of got thrown into the deep end. It literally was the hose pipe in terms of being introduced to cloud formation. Um, all the scaling groups, which I basically read up on, had a little bit of dealings with. Kubernetes, which I've had a lot more dealings with, which is actually fascinating. Uh, Calico, which I have the Calico cat, I think, on my laptop. Yeah, I do. Um, and GitHub, which I'm no stranger to, but I learned a lot of fascinating things about GitHub's from some of our devs like Darren and Stefano and Ingemail that I didn't actually know before, like GitHub submodules and embedding repos in repos and um, lots of like the myriads of ways you can screw up a Git branch and yeah, generally when I get to a point where, you know, it's, it's telling me basically you screwed up Git so badly, I just delete the repo and call it 10 again and start from scratch. <laughs> I get to a point where I've got a marriage conflict and I'm like, oh, I give up, okay, run away. Delete, restart. <coughs> so yeah, it's been it's been interesting. I, I I I'll be honest, like I have I have no coding skills and I came to work day. I'm here for about five years now and I've I've had through you know just immersion in various teams and stuff. I picked up quite a bit. So yeah, there's a, a I have to edit this slide. So one of the developers I got very good friends with. He subsequently left Workday now. But yeah, he had an interesting perspective of the networking team here in Workday. Um, so I'm going to share it with you. So. He said, I'm not sure if it's still trying to dissuade you from joining the IMP network. And I said, no, what's, it's really un, what, this, this is really unglamorous side of IMP network, dealing with shit blowing up during a maintenance window, everything blaming the F5 of the network. And then he goes, the usual, everyone knows it's a firewall issue. <laughs> Damn firewall. Um, and then he basically said, I'm still trying to see the glamorous side of IMP networking. Um, so I tried to you know, lure him with the lures of PGP and VXLAN, MPLS. He was having none of it. He just said, no, beyond me. Um, he says, I want to just reach X from Y. It's over complexity. And he wasn't joking. Like, I literally taught this guy some basics about networking. Just the fundamentals. I, I said, please go back to your peers and spread the good word. Teach them, like, you can't allow 0000 in from the internet. So, um, this is my slide here. It's, um, my, our, we have an internal GitHub repo in Workday. So, you can see in 2006, I wasn't very active. In 2007, my activity just went. Uh, this block here I actually got PTO for two weeks. So that's why I was, like, <laughs> I was in Spain sunning myself on the beach. So yeah, my GitHub activity just grew exponentially in the last year. Um, but yeah, it was all worth it because I learned how code is deployed in terms of pipelines. I'm still learning that. Um, just in terms of working collaboratively with a group um, into, you know, on shared repos, etc. So um, this is one of my colleagues, Barissa, here. Um, so me and him have been working over and back on basically trying to push code to one of our dev repos. Um, I didn't know how to do it because it it's a dev repo. I didn't touch that. So he's like, I'll show you how to do it. Um, basically, hit a branch, pushed it up for Kubernetes, ran a git at Jenkins build. And first time my actual Jenkins build passed, I couldn't believe it. I was like, this is a miracle. So yeah, it was my first contribution to the actual dev app repo, and it was basically subsequently merged into master then a day later, and I was very proud of myself for that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I have a quick demo, because it isn't me without a demo. Um, the guys know that, I like to do my demos. Um, so this demo, uh, one of the things I covered, or one of the things that I guess it's a massive project, but um, what I wanted to show you was a bit of cloud formation. So cloud formation, the whole idea is what, what we try to instill in ourselves is that we, we don't try and manually not touch anything. Build everything as infrastructure as code. So um, can you make the thing bigger? Of course I can, yeah. Hold on, two six. This guy here. Is that better? So we can go up the screen very fast now in two seconds. So I have a this is one of those I pre-baked earlier, jobbies. So, VPC, security, 
and I'll explain it as it's running. I just want to let it go for a while and then let it run. So essentially what this guy is doing is um, it's uh, building, now it's, it, it's, it's, it's Ansible, so it's item pub, so it's already pre-built, so it's going to change very little. But we're actually building an entire VPC stack. So that's, in Amazon terminology, that's all the subnets, the VPC itself, the subnets, the route tables, um, the uh, VPNs, the customer gateways, all the uh, insertion, the, inserting the routes into the route tables in AWS, um, mapping the route tables to subnets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it actually does the creation of the VPC stack and it spits out a bunch of output, which will hopefully push up on the screen now in a few seconds. And then it moves on and builds security groups. Then it moves on and builds an actual um, a bone to host and just pops uh, Apache on it and renders a web page. That's the plan. I'm hoping it works. I'm hoping I'm not going to be cursed by the demo gods that curse, curse the people tonight. Um, one of those either it's going to work or it's not going to work. It was working earlier, so it should work. There she goes. Okay. Oh, I was just. Oh, you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just looking at it quickly here. Yeah, the, the A at the beginning is important. Oh yeah, that's important. Yeah, that would need, I need that profile. Thank you, Brian. Can I save you? Oh no, and a quote, and on the back tick. Okay. I need to just be taken away from keyboards. I'm not safe. Should go now. Yeah, there goes. Okay, better. <laughs> so I, I'll scroll back up the screen when this guy completes. So I'd rather just let it run because it's a little time consuming. So what's happening here is there's a lot. It's spitting out a lot of output. It's um, stack out. So we're using CloudFormation and we're exporting stack outputs. But these are a lot of Elastic IPs. We're exporting the Elastic IP uh, IDs. Um, I've got like a Kubernetes or a gateway inog. I even called it inog for you. Uh, I know. Uh, we have SFTP servers, oh, a whole bunch of like networks, yeah, a ton of stuff. And then it goes through, creates an S3 bucket, it renders, so it's all in YAML, it's rendering, it's, it's, it's YAML based templates and it's all been driven from Ansible. So it's all codified. So because it's in code, then you can check it into code, you can check the vert changes, you have logs, you can blame, you can see who's changed what. Um, it's now building the security stack, and there it goes. It's built all the security groups. Uh, there's quite a lot of them there. Um, and then we go on, and it's built the host, and it's gone and installed Apache, and it's installed an index page. So what I wanted to show you quickly was, what will happen is we go to this guy. You know I love beer, so <laughs> uh, This page is not going to render for me right now. And the reason it's not going to render is, to, uh, is because I'm going to pop this guy here. Just save this little bit of YAML. Um, here. Yep, so we're going to just let this guy run. And just to save on time, I'm just going to update the security stack so we're not running through the whole lot again. So it's just going to hit the security stack this time. So it's going through all these guys. It's, re it's, up doing, it's just rendering that template again because that's the only one that's changed. Again, these guys are all item potent, so they're staying green, which is good. That's what we want. Now in the middle of changing CloudFormation. So I don't know, obviously, outside of the Amazon folk here, if people have played around with CloudFormation. Um, you can see now it's actually, if I show you on my screen, it's actually updating um, the security stack right now for us. It's doing an update. It's like, okay, let's push this change. And the change is actually almost complete. So, sick. a little while to just complete the tech. Yeah, it's in cleanup now, so. So in theory, it's probably already done the change, so I should be able to go here. Oh, and I put an error in this, I know, see. <laughs> so, bad. so I'm gonna actually update it again, when this guy finishes, which is uh, almost done, to uh, make an I know D. I hate waiting for things. My only complaint. There we go, it's almost done. Almost done. 
come on. I can now come on the time. There we go. It's complete. So it should have it was spit out to the screen. Okay. So I know D. Let's fix that. We should be I know D. So I actually have it here. It's a little index page. I'm just going to go and change this to D. This is a index page that's going to get loaded up into Apache. So now I now have two cha two changes to my repo. And I'm going to just kick it off now with host. So it's going to go into my host, my Ubuntu host in Amazon. That was deployed with CloudFormation as well. And it's going to obviously it's going to try and install Apache again. But obviously, Apache's already installed. So that's, that should go green. It's item potent. But it will actually, the, the index page task in, a, in the playbook should actually go orange. Because it's going to actually change the index page. Because I've gone and changed the text of C from C to D. And we should now, when I refresh the page, there we go, one change. Let's go back to the page. That's me, I'm done. Oh, and the last, sorry, my last slide is, it's in honor of uh, John. So I uh, just want to say that, big shout out to John. I know he's actually left the room, so I think he ran away because I think he, I knew, he knew the slide was coming. Uh, just from Dog Paw Brewing. So, uh, that's the Inog beers that people have been drinking tonight. They're from John Mooney. Um, he's an anniversary brewer here in our, in our office. But uh, yeah, he's, he wants to make this his full-time occupation, making beer, and I completely applaud that. So that's me. Thank you. So we've got time just for one or two quick questions. Has anyone got questions? Yeah. Uh, again, with the question you mentioned code pipelines, uh, are you using the AWS product code pipeline or are you implementing your pipelines with some other products? So we're using Jenkins internally. So we have a Jenkins pipeline for our developer code. So it's a Git and Jenkins. So enterprise Git. But yes, okay. Yeah. Is that two or one? Okay. I'm kicking him. I'm a Kelly. Thanks for working on that. Yes, exactly. Uh, so, quick question. The last time you had an event like this, you gave a demonstration of this deployment and stuff. You intentionally broke it for demonstration purposes. You didn't break it on purpose tonight. Does that mean it's in production now? Yes, it is. <laughs> we, we actually have a live tenant on it. So, it's, yeah, it's in production. So. Yeah, I, <laughs> I couldn't believe it either. <laughs> I've actually got a really quick question. So the, the IAM groups, I mean, presumably there's numerous existing groups already within Workday. If someone was starting from scratch and yeah. started to try and do what you just did, especially with VPCs and VPGs and so on and so forth, what was the trickiest bit or what was the most workload intensive bit for you as a human well, to get over. Yeah, well, I guess for me as a network engineer, I mean, I, I'll never forget, like, I literally, I'll be honest, like, when I got, when I was introduced to this project about a year ago, um, a couple of the guys here know, I actually turned it down. So I was asked to do this from an, the need of a network engineer, kind of, you know, keep them straight, on straight and narrow. And I actually turned it down, saw the, I, I said, I don't know any of this stuff. Literally, cloud formation knew nothing about, you know, basic Git, basic coding, and my manager at the time, Connor, um, he talked me into it, and I'm really glad he did, um, and it is learn. I mean, it's all YAML. YAML is very, I mean, it's it's very human readable. So um, it's once you can get your head around YAML and Jinja too. Now I chose to do our deployments, and the rest of my group, my team, Puppet Titan, chose to use Ansible as our orchestration. But, I mean, other groups have chosen to just write straight up Ruby or Python to do the deployments. So you can, you know, and you can do them in JSON as well. I think YAML is just a little bit easier to read. I mean, I mean something like this, if I show you quickly here, like you're, you're taking stuff like this um, and you're feeding it. Actually, the, the IP address there with the security group, you're taking something like that on the left and then you're feeding it into a bit of Jinja too. And you know that's pushing. That's 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 pushing. That in, when that gets applied, that's not important, and it's updating the security group to say, you know, here's these workday inog IPs, the list of these IPs, 
populate for, for IP and <coughs> sites, populate them into, or for a work I know, sorry, populating into host space. So it, it, it's, if you can get your head around a bit of Ginger 2 and Ansible, then, then you're, you're, you'll get this stuff like this straight up the gift. So yeah. If I, can, if I can do it, anyone can. <laughs> cool. Anybody else? Good. Then we'll just thank the panelists again. Thank you.